One of my next guests says inflation will remain sticky enough to warrant a couple more hikes by the Fed this year, and he now sees a slowdown arriving later than previously thought. For more, let's bring in Michael Gapin, Bank of America's head of U.S. economics, and Keith Fitzgerald, principal at the Fitzgerald Group. Michael and Keith, it's great to see you both. And Mike, are you the one uh, feeling a little bit more bullish lately? Sure. Well, I think it's hard to deny that the incoming data has been resilient in, in the U.S. economy. So we're now tracking growth of around 2 percent in the first quarter, solid upward revisions to construction spending, which may be coming out of those large fiscal packages that were passed previously. But the big difference for us has been the sharp rebound in, in labor supply. Last year, there were shortages in labor supply of maybe around 2 million is what we were estimating. Uh, that's now down to about 400,000. Immigration has surged. Participation among prime working age women ha has come back. Makes it easier to add jobs without pushing the unemployment rate lower. It adds to growth in disposable income and resiliency to spending. So, yeah, the, the combination of all of this and a little better risk backdrop led us to push out any downturn. And we actually made it a lot more more mild. So hmm. we do think the economy will, will move into 2024 uh, without experiencing a downturn. Because if I'm not mistaken, Mike, your firm was probably the, the it, definitely the first, maybe the only to, to definitively say you thought we were going to be in a recession in the back half of 23, right? Yeah, I don't know if we were we were first, but yeah, we I, I felt like there was a big gap between labor supply and labor demand, uh, and and to bring inflation down, you you had to lean against that. That that was the Fed's messaging at the time. The err on the side of doing more than than less, but you know you have to respond to what the data is telling you, and the signal is there's more resiliency here. Uh, so it looks like if there is going to be a downturn, it'll it'll be later. And in the meantime, that resiliency, I think, argues that the Fed probably has more work to do. Yeah. And you also note that the fiscal policy bill spurring investment in manufacturing. That's look, we've seen a massive boom in menu. I've never seen anything like it in construction spending in some of those areas. Keith, for you, how are you investing? I mean, you've been kind of bullish through and through, if I recall. Well, we've been bullish off the October lows, as you recall, and I said distinctly, big tech will return to the head of the class long before people are prepared to accept that reality. That's still the case today. You're, those companies are changing our world, and the amount of money chasing them is growing. It's not shrinking, which, if you think about an ocean, rising tide raises all boats, that's very much the situation we have here today. Apple, Palantir, these are names that you talked about last time. Apple's at an all-time high today. Oracle, man, did that catch you, even you by surprise? Oracle did, honestly. You know, that was one that I did not think was going to be amongst the front runners. But, you know, good on the stock. I don't happen to own Oracle. I wish I did, but I'm content to stick with Apple and Palantir for now. All right.